Modern life is fairly fast-paced, so you need fast-paced transportation to keep up with it. This is where the long-planned Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail comes into play. This 350-kilometer high-speed rail is scheduled to open in 2026 and will connect Singapore to the Malaysian capital in just 90 minutes. However, you would have probably heard that this project has had a troubled history, so let us discuss some recent developments regarding this project. Stay till the end to know how this project is going to benefit both countries. Welcome back to our channel, Build to Innovate, where we provide you with the facts related to mega projects worldwide. Before heading on to the video, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our updates. The Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail was conceived as part of the country's economic transformation program, which aimed to make Singapore a high income country. It is anticipated that the project will become Southeast Asia's first high speed railway and the fastest point to point method of public transportation between two of the most dynamic and rapidly expanding economic engines of the region. The Singapore terminus would be at Jurong East the location of the former Euron Country Club, while the Kuala Lumpur endpoint would be at Bandar, Malaysia, at the location of the former Raffles Country Club. A tunnel entrance and siding facilities would have been constructed, allowing the railway to reach the Strait of Johor. The Suruhanjaya Pengangkutan Awam Darat, Land Public Transport Commission of Malaysia, is the policymaker and regulator for coordinating the project inside the Malaysian corridor, and a new business called MyHSR was established to assume ownership and development of the project. While the Singapore Land Transport Authority is in charge of the Singapore Corridor, which was first announced in 2013, the 350 km line would follow the west coast of the Malay Peninsula and include eight stations seven in Malaysia and one in Singapore. International services would run from Kuala Lumpur, Iskandar Puteri and Singapore, and at these three stations there would be a co-located customs facility where international passengers would clear customs of both countries. The plan aims to create an above-ground civil monument that honours this new international entrance to Singapore and is motivated by the high-speed stations in Beijing South and Guangzhou South. To maximize efficiency and satisfy customs, immigration, and quarantine procedures, the terminus implements airport-style segregation of arriving and departing passengers. The line will have two standard gauge tracks and be powered by tested high-speed technologies. Trains on the line are anticipated to travel at a speed of 300 kph. On the same route, express service will arrive in 90 minutes and transit service in 120 minutes. In 2016, both countries committed to the 13 billion projects and signed the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore High Speed Rail Agreement. In 2018, with the unexpected change in Malaysia's government, it took time to reassess many of the financial commitments made under the previous administration. This cost-checking initiative was part of a wider view to reducing Malaysia's $223 billion debt that was projected to be paid off in 2026 that was controversially taken over by the previous administration. At the time, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, the Prime Minister, raised concerns about the project's exorbitant cost to build the Kuala Lumpur Singapore high speed train. Both governments decided to postpone the project until May 31, 2020, at Malaysia's request, as part of a comprehensive evaluation of these scheduled mega projects to identify cost saving solutions, including assessing and improving the alignment station locations and business models. Due to the delay, Malaysia paid Singapore $11 million in compensation for the costs associated with the cancellation. The payment was made towards the end of January 2019. However, in May 2020, the delay was once more extended to December 31st. The country will pay a price for the choice to scrap the project. Before the project's suspension, it was stated that Malaysia would have to pay Singapore back for the expenditures associated with its implementation. The project was abandoned on January 1, 2021, when Singapore refused to accept Malaysia's proposed revisions. It is fair to say that the initially announced cancellation of this project caused some tension between Malaysia and Singapore, as Malaysia announced in March 2021 that they had paid $70.8 billion dollars to Singapore for expenses involved in the development of the Kuala Lumpur Singapore high-speed rail project. 
Now, let us discuss some recent developments regarding the project. According to Malaysia's Transport Minister, Datuk Seri Ir, Dr. Wee Kas Yong talks with Singapore about the revival of the Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail, which will begin this year. They informed Parliament that his ministry had been tasked with initiating discussions with the Singapore government and that discussions were still in the early stages at the time. Currently, the Transport Ministry is responsible for initiating these talks. When Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob paid an official visit to Singapore in November 2021, the dead and buried Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail surfaced once more. The Prime Minister of Singapore, Ismail Sabri, suggested reviving discussions on the Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail. They replied to the Prime Minister that Singapore and Malaysia had previously reached an agreement to terminate this project that had been amicably settled and closed. However, the Singaporean Prime Minister added that Singapore has opened two new proposals on the high-speed rail project from Malaysia, and the two Ministers of Transportation will talk about the issue. Singapore anticipates getting additional information from Malaysia so that they can review it and re-evaluate the situation from scratch. Regarding air travel between the two neighbours, the officials shared that there are approximately 500 flights per week from Singapore to seven destinations throughout Malaysia. These flights serve the route between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore. The route is currently served by three main modes of transportation, including air, road, and the existing intercity rail network. The service was planned to run 10 car trains with a capacity for up to 100 passengers per car at average speeds of 300 kilometers per hour, which would reduce the rail travel time between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore to 90 minutes. This was necessary as the existing traffic exceeds the capacity of the existing means of transportation. The Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail is more than just a transportation project. It is a motivation towards socio-economic development in Singapore and the immediate cities along the project corridor, beginning in Singapore. The estimated investment of the project is $13 billion, but sources say that cost will be much higher than this. The funding sources are yet to be decided, as the cost should be shared between the Singapore and Malaysian governments. By 2060, it was anticipated that the high-speed rail project would add $4.6 billion to the economies of Singapore and Malaysia and provide 111,000 jobs. Reducing carbon emissions on transportation between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore was also seen as a significant plus point. Additionally, connectivity will allow businesses to become more productive and access a wider market, while the general public will benefit from an improved travel experience with shorter travel times and a comfortable ride. Do tell us your views about this rail project in the comments section down below. If you have reached this far, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. See you in another video. Until then, take care.